What's up everyone, today we're gonna be solving another crack me, but just before we start, I wanna share an idea that I have. Cause if you're watching this video, I assume you wanna learn reverse engineering, just like me. So I thought it would be fun to learn together. I wanna make a series of videos of me reversing different stuff, sometimes successfully, sometimes not. And for each video, there would be a thread on my Discord server where everyone can discuss the problems and figure out solutions together. Let me know in the comments what you think and definitely join the Discord community. It doesn't matter if you are a total beginner or a pro, everyone is welcome there. We recently crossed uh, 200 members at the time of recording this video, so I'm thankful to everyone who is contributing. Okay, so let's start. You can download the crack me from the link in the description. Uh, just drag and drop it to x32 debug. This is the uh, x86 crack me 32 bit. Uh, so drag it there. Now click this uh, horizontal arrow to jump to an address of entry point uh, like this. Let me clear breakpoints because uh, I was doing it earlier. And uh, all right, let's see what we are uh, dealing with here. First thing, we see uh, this call to create file. Now, uh, with this, once we know that this function is present there, let me open up the Microsoft documentation. Uh, let's go create file a msdn, like that. Let me make it bigger. Okay. And uh, let's just have it here. Okay. So, uh, we have this uh, push instructions before the function. So these are the arguments that are uh, passed to the function. They are in reversed order. So basically this, as you can see, it's data.txt. We can double click, uh, right click, sorry, follow in dump, reverse uh, here to this address. And as you can see here down at the bottom, at this address, uh, 00403000, there is data.txt uh, string. So we are pushing this string as the first argument. And uh, if you look at this documentation, the first argument is indeed the file name. All right, then we have desired access, share mode, LP security attributes, uh, creation flag. But this, uh, the creation flag, I believe, is what is interesting for us right now, because uh, with create file, you can both create a new file and uh, open an existing. and. Uh, and creation disposition parameter uh, takes care of it. it you can specify uh, the action here. So, and you can see open existing is free. And we have indeed value free uh, right here. So uh, basically what this does, it's trying to open a file data.txt. All right, so that's, uh, that's a clue. It's trying to open a file. Uh, if it fails, what does it do? Okay, if it fails, it jumps to uh, push zero here and call exit process. So, uh, if there is no data.txt file, it uh, it is finishes it finishes running basically. Uh, if it finds this file, what does it do later? It calls global alloc. Okay, and it's reading, and it's reading and um, sixteen because this is. Uh, Hexadecimal, by the way. So it's uh, reading 16 bytes, first 16 bytes from the file and allocating it here. It's passing a uh, handle to this, uh, to this buffer that uh, got allocated with global alloc. Both these functions, of course, you can, let's say, read file. Let's say you want to check read file. So again, read file here. And uh, you can see that uh, handle to a file is needed, LP buffer, and uh, number of bytes to read, number of bytes read, LP overlap. So these are the parameters. And we are indeed uh, passing, not we, but this program is indeed passing it, passing the parameters there. Uh, all right, so we are reading this file, then we close the handle, and then we call some function. So uh, let's actually open up this and create a file data.txt and let's put, for example, b. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 
11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So let's say 16, uh, 16 uh, letters, chars, 16 characters. Uh, all right, and let me uh, minimize that. And if you see, there is this uh, circle arrow. If you click it, it uh, is basically starting over uh, the debugger. So once again, click here to jump to the others of entry point. Let me set a breakpoint right there. Or maybe no, let me set a, set a breakpoint at the first instruction of this uh, function. If you double click, it will bring you uh, to this uh, to this address. So basically everything that has jump or call, it will bring you to uh, the address that it's jumping or calling. Uh, all right, but let me uh, step over with this arrow. We are stepping over each instruction. So it's doing something. You can see at the right, you have this view of uh, different registers and flags. So you can see them changing. Uh, if you are new to X uh, to this uh, to this program, it may be confusing. But oh wait, as you can see, we jumped to uh, we jumped to the exit. So something is wrong. Let me let me do it one more time. What is failing? Okay. All right. So we are we failed to read data.txt for some reason. Mm, why is that? Okay, uh, <laughs> pretty obvious because uh, I shouldn't uh, have specified this extension. If you if you do that, it's basically data.txt.txt. Okay, uh, so let me run it one more time. Again, this, and now it should be all fine. We call this, we compare, and uh, yeah, we are good. Great. So. Uh, now it's allocating some memory and reading the file and it is reading it to this location I believe. So let me follow it in dump. You all can see it here, right there. So if we step over, we should see, yeah, exactly. At this uh, address, it's the content of our file is present. Great. So. Now it's closing the handle, it uh, will not use it anymore. It clears the EAX register, as you can see, it's right now it's one and then it is all zeros. What do we have now? We have this call reverse. I have a breakpoint there, so it should bring us to this function exactly. And what does it do? Uh, it, uh, it's setting up the stack, so pretty basic process. It is loading, uh, it is loading these addresses where the strings are to ESI and EDI. So you can see ESI changes with the address of what are you doing string, uh, the base address, so the, the first, uh, the, the address of the beginning of the string basically. And the same goes for the content of our file. And they are both uh, 16, uh, 16 characters, including the question mark, of course. Now, uh, we are testing, we are moving uh, ESI to AL. So AL, it basically holds one character from this, the first character. So right now it's W, right? 57 here, this is the hexadecimal representation of W. And uh, if it fails, if it's not a null, if it's not a null, we, if it is a null, we jump to this, so 1023, so it's here. So if uh, if there is, so basically if there is no characters left, it is uh, returning from the function. But there are characters, so it's uh, doing ROR AL3. So this is uh, rotate right. And how rotate works, it's basically, you can imagine a string of ones and zeros, and uh, you basically uh, take the three, uh, by the three characters on the right, let's assume it's 100, zero, zero, and you put them at the beginning. So it's like sliding all of these ones and zeros to the right, and by three. And you, you I mean, I, mean uh, I hope you understand it. It's, uh, it's pretty hard to explain it in the air. But, uh, but yeah, you're basically putting the last three characters at the beginning, sort of. All right, so we are doing this, and if you do that, you have uh, EAX becomes zeros and EA, 
So this is a different character. Uxor AL with EDI. So we are basically Xoring here the first, uh, so Xoring the this EA with uh, B, with the this first character, right? And uh, now we increase ESI, increase EDI. So our registers are now pointing to the next letter, uh, to the next character in both of those, uh, in both of those uh, texts, and we loop. Okay. Yeah, basically that's what it is doing. And if you if you keep looping here, you can see at the bottom that our string is changing. Okay, our string is changing here. So I so we are effectively uh, obfuscating it. Okay, so let's uh, let's click through this function. Let's obfuscate everything there. Okay, one more iteration and now al is null so you can see there is no there is all zeros if in eax and al is the lowest part of uh, eax of course so this jump should be executed it is we add we, re, we are restoring the stack and we return from the function great here we are clearing the uh, eax register and let me uh, now double click this function because it is another one that we're gonna be calling soon. And that, so let me break a point, set a breakpoint here. All right, let's go back to uh, to our instruction that we are currently in. So let's jump. Uh, I mean, step over. And what is this? We are loading address to the ESI. This address. So again, we can follow the dump. And we are here, so it's that's correct. This is at this address, this starts. So let's do that. We are pushing ESI. So ESI is effectively a parameter of this reverse function. So we are basically pushing the address of the of the start of this string. So let's step over into the function. Again, uh, pretty standard uh, setup of a stack. We are comparing ax to zero, uh, so if it's uh, if it's null, we will not we would not execute this function. As you can see, we would jump immediately here and return from the function, but we don't. And what are we doing here? We are xoring ax, so we are effectively xoring what is here, and these bytes seven four six one six eight five four are these bytes here but in reverse this is the little endian notation if i'm correct i think i am uh, so basically what are we doing here is we are i think obfuscating four bytes at a time so this is another uh, another obfuscation obfuscating function so first it's source whatever is in the eax this uh, at that point is that this word uh, this this word that so we XOR it with this constant uh, value. Then we move AX to ECX. Then we are operating on the ECX now. So we rotate right by five. We add another constant value. We rotate right uh, by five again. Then we move this uh, ECX to the... Uh, we move it back, basically. So as you can see right now, Instead of that, you have this uh, weird characters. We add to ESI4 so that we are starting just after that and we are looping. So yeah, exactly. This function takes four characters, obfuscates them and moves next. So it takes an another four characters, another, another until, until EX is zero. So until you meet a D word so until we meet uh, until we meet eight bytes of zeros, so basically here, uh, it will stop. Uh, it will stop there. So it will obfuscate all of this, all of this text that we have here. So uh, let me maybe 
set up a breakpoint just after this function here. And let's... Uh, why can't I do that? Breakpoint, toggle, toggle. What's going on? Okay, for some reason I cannot... Something is lagging. Okay, let me uh, set up a breakpoint here. Okay. Uh, maybe I can maybe I cannot break on this instruction. I, I don't know honestly, but uh, Yeah, so let's jump Jump over here as you can see all of this is uh, obfuscated And what it's gonna do now it's gonna load another uh, It's gonna basically do it one more time, but starting from a different uh, point, so it's gonna Where is it? Uh, free to following dump, it's right there, so right here, so if you if we step over now this will be obfuscated another by this 401.02.8 uh, function and this will stay the same so uh, we can step over pretty much because we already know how it will go, let me delete these breakpoints so step over. Now we do the same thing, but from another, uh, from yet another uh, start point. So from here. All right. So we go from here, and this stays the same. And I see we are basically calling this function five times, but we are starting at a different address. So that's how this obfuscation. Uh, that's how this obfuscation goes. So. Let me uh, step over one more time, and here uh, is something different. Here we are loading from here, like that, and we are comparing ESI, ESI plus 4, ESI plus 8, and ESI plus C with four different constant values. So we are essentially, we essentially want to have this, 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 and this equal to these values to pass this test, because if uh, the comparison, com comparison fails, we are jumping to this instruction, 401150, and this is, yeah, this is exiting a process. So what we can do to actually pass this, uh, to pass this test, we can do something that is called patching. So uh, you want to change these hexadecimal values to the values that our program is expecting from us. So let me, um, let me edit that. Here you want to click uh, binary edit. And instead of 9e, you want to pass ad. Remember, little end the annotation, so in, uh, in reverse order. Now 58. Uh, now you want 45. And cd. And if you press OK, you can see that uh, you have changed these bytes so they are now red. And if you step over, I believe we should be fine with the comparison. Yeah, exactly, we passed this test. Now we are here. So let's do the same thing. Let's highlight these bytes, binary edit. And let's go with db c9 d5. And the last thing is f7. All right, I believe we are correct. So now we can step over. Exactly, we passed. Again, let's do that. I could have done, I honestly could have just uh, edited all of those at the same time, but I just want to show you the process. And uh, now 7b, c5, 33. Great. Let's step over. Okay, and the last thing is to edit this. So it's gonna be 33 to C, 74, and 5A. Okay. So now if we step over, we passed another test. <clears throat> what we are doing here, we are loading this. So uh, from here, Okay, we are subtracting again four values, so let's see what this will result with. Okay, so it is reversing the obfuscation. 
at uh, just of this string. Of course, it uh, we cannot assume that this subtraction will uh, reverse all the uh, all of the obvious cases. Ob all of the obvious cases is probably calculated just to reverse this string. So it it was it uh, it revealed that is correct string here. And then if we step over, it's gonna push good job and that is correct and two more parameters and call message box a function and indeed this message box appeared good job that is correct okay so this is not the solution to the crack me of course the solution is to reverse this algorithm and uh, pass a correct string to this data.txt so we have to figure out the correct 16 bytes that uh, needs to be passed there that after this obfuscation we have these values and then uh, we're gonna have the password basically this is just uh, this is called patching this is uh, uh, just used just to see the final result all right so we are skipping this test basically uh, all right so this is what we want to achieve now we know it important uh let's review what this uh, let's review what this script is doing i have some notes uh in the readme uh in the readme file of this crack me so let me this is the message from an author and these are my notes so uh the algorithm is attempting to read 10 bytes 16 bytes not 10 bytes from data.txt file if success allocate uh, them in memory this is what we know reverse 401000 function this function takes the string what are you doing rotates each byte uh, by three bits and uh, source it with corresponding bytes in the data allocated at this address this process continues uh, byte by byte until the end of the string of this string we know it then all text from address here to the first four null bytes is being obfuscated this is uh, the function that we were discussing here so effectively we have uh, these instructions that are obfuscating the function now uh, a logic thing to do would be to get this uh, to somehow get these values like we have it uh, here and uh, copy all of these hexadecimal values and uh, write a program that will reverse this process and that's basically what i did let me show you it is not perfect it is far from perfect basically uh, very far from, from perfect i assume even but uh, yeah i mean it is what it is uh, with which program it will be better all right so uh i have uh, this function to uh, to reverse this function basically so this is uh, instead of rotate right we are rotating left by five we are subtracting this instead of adding we are rotating left one more time and we are xoring uh with this uh, hard-coded value so this as you can see let me put it like side by side as you can see, it is uh, it's basically the reverse of this. This is the last instruction here, and this is the first instruction here. So let's uh, let me show you more. This is uh, these are just some functions to help me that are uh, converting from hex to uint32 and uh, back. This is doing the rotate left. This is doing the xor. This is doing the subtraction. And this is doing the rotate right, but uh, not important at the moment. Uh, then we have this reverse 401000 function that is not working really well. I mean, it should work, but I have some problems with it. And uh, basically what I did is I, I came to the point that I had this, uh, this uh, string. I basically uh, did what we did now. I uh, patched this crack me and I copied all of this hexadecimal code up to the that is correct. So we are 
alg our algorithm is uh, obfuscating everything from this point, all right? 403, 012, up to the bottom. So I copied all of that and uh, I have uh, it somewhere there. Wait, I have it somewhere there. Notion, let me open up my Notion. It should be right there. So I had this input. This was my output. I had to adjust because uh, my I, ha I didn't uh, implement automate, uh, automated padding. So I had to adjust the zeros at the beginning to uh, to make our, my script not crash because it will it will crash if uh, it is not dividable by eight. I mean the count of characters. Uh, right, it is expecting it. So I had to uh, do some stuff with padding, but basically this was the input, this was the output. Again, input, output. So as you can see what I was doing here, I was running this function and then I was adjusting the starting point. So I was deleting some bytes from the end as uh, it is in reverse. You have to, uh, you have to see that if you take uh, from my notes, if you take this and we reversed it here and then, uh, so this was the output of the first, uh, of the first reverse, this was the input output. So I was shortening it. And then when I got the, uh, the ultimate, like the final output here, I had to add these bits that I deleted earlier so that uh, I can fill those two. I'm gonna show you it in a second, maybe the process, cause it will be easier to understand. Uh, but basically what I ended up with at the end is this. This is, this string here is, wait, hex to ASCII. Uh, so I can show it to you. If you paste it here, you see that it is in reverse. That is correct, exclamation mark. So basically this script is working. If you copy this, you will see a string. What are you doing in reverse? Actually, I should have included this probably uh, at the end because it is a, I think it is an exclamation mark, uh, not exclamation mark, but a question mark. But anyway, yeah, this is some data that I have no idea <laughs> uh, where it comes from something like this. This is what I assume is the correct, is the correct uh, code uh, without this, uh, without this first obfuscation, because this is just, uh, this is just uh, reversing. I'm just reversing this function, not, not this. Uh, it's important. And this is some dummy data uh, at the end. I did it first with uh, my input. I did it first. Oh, what is going on? Kanye, be quiet, please. And I did it first with my input, uh, not with uh, patched input. And uh, I was successful. <laughs> I was successful. Uh, I was successful in retrieving what I uh, first, what I first. Uh, had uh, had put in this data.txt. So I assumed that it should work with this final. But when I put this, and by the way, uh, when you wanna put this inside, uh, when you wanna put this inside this, uh, to reverse it, to reverse this this function, you have to start with A4. You have to reverse this little end annotation. As you can see, A4 is last here and A4 is for here. So these are the 16 bytes that I got. This is the hexadecimal code for what are you doing? Exclamation mark string. And, uh, but basically when I run this code right now, it's prompting up some, uh, some garbage. Oh wait, it, uh, doesn't actually, uh, for some reason. Okay. Whatever. Uh, I probably uh, was editing something and forgot, forgot to uh, to make it work again. Uh, but what's going on here? I, I basically got stuck here because uh, I wasn't able to retrieve the correct code. And uh, 
I will copy this. Uh, I will copy this program uh, on the Discord. I will paste it on the Discord channel in the, in the corresponding thread. As I said at the beginning, uh, this is one of these videos that I want us together to work at. That's, this is the idea, basically. So uh, once again, join the Discord server, and uh, there will be this code with my notes, with my notes and everything I uh, figured out about this algorithm. So uh, you are welcome to contribute to the discussion. I'm sure. I'm sure it's uh, it's very. I have some very easy mistake, very silly mistake here, because uh, it should should work. Uh, some something like that should work. Uh, but yeah. Anyway, this is the process of reversing this crack me. I almost got to the end. I'm very close. Uh, so I hope some of you will reverse it. I'm probably sure that some of you will reversing there are a lot of smart people at the discord community in the discord community and i hope you are one of them <laughs> if you are not one of them join the discord community again link in the description uh, everyone is welcome and uh, and i think that's it for the video so thanks for watching and uh, i normally don't put videos like that like unfinished videos uh, i always try to finish uh, every project to the end and not show you all of the mistakes I'm making at the process, but I think it would be uh, cool to connect with you this way. And I'm sure we can exchange a lot of knowledge and to learn from each other. And that's what I want to achieve. So I hope you like it. Uh, let me know once again what you think about this idea in the comments. If Do you want to have more videos uh, like that when I just uh, explain stuff uh, line by line? And uh, this is sort of like a, more like a chatting thing and not uh, not really scripted and planned from the start to the, to the end. So yeah, once again, let me know, leave a like, subscribe and as always, see you soon.